In this video, we will be reviewing several genetics terms that most or all of you are likely familiar with. First, we'll begin with a locus. A locus is simply any location on a chromosome. Loci may or may not be occupied by genes, hereditary units that determine an organism's traits. For example, two loci on this chromosome are occupied by genes. One gene produces ribosomal RNA, the enzymatic component of ribosomes. The second gene produces a protein, the ABO glycosyl transferase enzyme, which determines the ABO blood group in humans. A gene may come in several variants called alleles. The ABO glycosyl transferase gene has three major variants. Allele 1, denoted by capital A, produces a glycosyl transferase that converts the H antigen on the surface of red blood cells to an A antigen. Allele 2, denoted by capital B, produces a glycosyl transferase that converts the H antigen to a B antigen. Lastly, Allele 3, denoted by a little i, produces a non-functional glycosyl transferase. In Mendelian genetics, a common practice is to denote alleles of genes with letters. The use of different letters to denote the alleles of a gene is a shorthand representation of the fact that each allele is functionally different at the molecular level. An individual's genetic makeup, or genotype, manifests as an observable trait or phenotype. Humans, like the fruit flies you will be working with, are diploid organisms, meaning that each individual has two copies of each chromosome. Individuals, like myself, who carry two copies of the same allele, are said to be homozygous for the ABO gene. Individuals, like Udo, who carry two different alleles, are heterozygous. Notice that although a gene can have multiple alleles, any one normal individual can only have two alleles of the gene. An allele, like the A allele, whose phenotype is expressed with just one copy of the allele, is a dominant allele. In contrast, an allele whose phenotype is masked when present as a single copy in a heterozygous individual is a recessive allele. Therefore, recessive alleles, like the I allele, only manifest their phenotypes when present in two copies in homozygous individuals. Homozygous individuals, like myself, with two copies of a recessive allele are said to be homozygous recessive. Likewise, homozygous individuals like Sarah with two copies of a dominant allele are homozygous dominant. An important point to note here is that dominance and recessiveness are not intrinsic properties of alleles. Rather, whether an allele behaves as a dominant or recessive allele is dependent on the allele it is paired with. For example, the A and B alleles are each dominant when paired with the I allele. However, when paired with each other, they are said to be codominant. We will explore this type of allele relationship in a later video.